Hey, it's uh, Lisa Marie and Jennifer again, and we're at Dunrobin Castle, and um, I'm going to try to do this, so be forgiving. <laughs> By the way, if you're enjoying um, all the stuff from We Women Who Wander, um, we encourage you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you dislike it, go ahead and hit the share. thumbs down. Do feel free to share it. Please comment. We love the comments. Um, and we have actually picked a name. For the car we have we are going to announce that later today it's gonna be very exciting mm -hmm. i know you're all thrilled okay we're gonna switch around here are you ready for this Don robin castle this is just the side kind of boring view ready oh yeah side boring view nothing really exciting here oh right how gorgeous is this with the sun behind it right in your eyes there and by the way this is again is the view of the gardens. Parterre gardens, not gardens. I guess it depends on how you describe it. I think they uh, are very similar or they're, one might be included in the other. And I will do my best to continue filming this. We're gonna have to pause you right here though, because I need to go down those stairs and walk around. Okay, I made it down to the balcony area, and now we get to go all the way back, looking up at that. And it's just magical. I feel like I'm, I'm in a fairy tale castle. It's stunning. This is, again, not the really exciting part, I guess. I think it's all gorgeous, though. I'm not the person to ask. I'm going to go around here again. Oh, it's absolutely stunning. And look at that. We've got sunshine. Okay, here I am in a different section of the balcony area. Again, just look at this place. I'm going to go down to the garden so I can give you guys a full view of this if I can. Oh, it's just stunning. And I did get some uh, shots from the, those windows just so you can see everything. But again, this is, this is the view. Look at that blue sky peeking through there. Isn't that just heavenly? Wow. I don't know if you can see any of that because of the sun. But... Just for a little bit of the detail. Oh my gosh. These are black currants. They look like my black currants at home. Um, I wonder if this. This is all obviously the formal garden area. But I think beyond there, there was a walled garden. And I think that may well have been the kitchen garden. It's astonishing. Oops, my finger in the way. It's astonishing to think that this. Castle's original keep is over seven year, 700 years old. Look at that. So now we're down nearly at garden level. You can really see the scope of how enormous this building is. And beautiful. Wow. 
All right, so this is the part of the garden tour where it might go a little long for some people. Do feel free to skip ahead. But this is uh, the herbaceous gar uh, border, I believe it was called, as a rule. And it's all along the side here. It's stunning. And again, let's remember this is getting towards autumn. So this is not in full bloom. This is not in its greatest shape. It's still so beautiful. It is so beautiful. A living tunnel. Look at how thick the hedging is. This is the hedging around this garden. And this is the formal parterre garden, I believe. It's called parterre. I believe it's also called a knot garden. So they did knots of hedging and planted into the centers of the knots or the I'm probably going to be critiqued on that one and corrected and I will hear the corrections because heaven knows I don't know everything about gardening look at how beautiful that is I think what's really neat about this place, too, is that you do hear lots of different languages being spoken. So you know there are people here from different countries. And there are people here from all over the UK. There are people here from just down the road. So everybody seems to really love and appreciate this place. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. It really is stunning. interesting too about the hedging is that there it's not super straight level I mean you can see how it's groomed it's it's really carefully manicured but it's not ruler straight it's got waves in it it has little lifts in it like that little area right over there I think that looks charming I love that Oh dear, there are roses in the center there. I think we know where I'm headed. I may have to pause for a second. Or shout to Heather. And when they first like this, is when I give the shout, Hey! On the moor, that's telling the falcon that the grouse has been flushed. <gasps> now, once I give the shout, everyone, usually the peregrine folds up his wings. He starts heading down towards the earth just like a missile, just as we spoke before. And as he falls and gathers speed, I'd like you to know those grouse are already flying down the moor at usually 75 miles per hour, plus whatever the wind speed is. Can be 85 or 90. But as he falls from the sky and gathers speed, he starts to gain on them at a heck of a rate of knots, everyone. And as he gets close, As he gets close oh. to those grouse, you would probably think it's a foregone conclusion. I'd like you to know everyone, I'd like you to know everyone, I have seen grouse coming past me, and if I was one in slow motion, with the falcon about to strike everyone, I've seen the grouse, oh. I've seen the grouse do this manoeuvre, at the last minute, I've seen the grouse do a barrel roll in the air, I've seen the falcon shoot straight past, We've missed it 200 miles an hour by about this much, everyone. And all the grouse go laughing and cackling at us as they go by. You see the grouse coming down the wind also, with the peregrine just about to strike everyone. And I've seen the grouse do this trick. I've seen them pull up their wing feathers at the last minute, drop a knot in the sky, and the falcon go whizzing over the top. I've also seen... Uh, the grouse pulling their tail feathers, everyone. Oh. And I 
I've seen the grouse jump up a notch and the falcon go whizzing underneath and we've missed again. In fact, we only catch about one in ten when we go out with the peregrine. So I tell this to people and say, Andy, why do you bother? Well, I'd like you to know everyone, it's not about putting lots of grouse uh, in the bag with a peregrine like this. It's about watching him at super high speed. Great accuracy, everyone. Oh, oh my goodness. him the rest of his quail served on a bed of gravel. <laughs> uh, after all that he also gets free health care. <laughs> the Hilton, they'll stay with you. Well first of all most birds don't like to eat seagulls because they taste disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> now, I used to hunt with the American Air Force and we used to have to get them to fly seagulls to get rid of them on the Air Force bases but they taste very greasy and salty so if you ever hunted a pigeon, a, a seagull, you have to replace the carcass with something tasty, otherwise the falcon soon uh, gives up chasing them. And if they tasted good, wouldn't we be eating them also? <laughs> okay, so they're not roses, <laughs> they're dahlias, but they're stunning. Oh, they're like sunshine. This is just beautiful. Just beautiful. This hedge looks like it hasn't had a haircut for a little while. So they're probably doing some things. I wonder if these are these peonies. Just beautiful. And then over here. Look at these beauties right over here. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Oh, look at the bees. Oh, the bees are so happy. You could see, I don't know if you could see it. the bees there.
beautiful. Right. So here again is the formal garden, the very formal parterre type garden over here. And I just wanted to pop over in this section over here as well. This is really, really lovely, but it looks almost deliberately rough. I mean, it just a little bit, just the teensiest little bit. Patterns mown into the grass, as opposed to everything being mown down, which, you know, allows for things like dandelions. <laughs> There's something really fabulous about that. And look, there are the crocus. I wonder if that's uh, a saffron crocus. I mean, it would make sense because the, the fall blooming crocuses are often used for, oh no, he used to doubled. I don't think that's a saffron crocus after all, but again, enormous, gorgeous hydrangeas. And they're more pink, aren't they, as they've aged? And I wonder if that means that the soil here is more basic, more alkaline than acid. The center knot area is again much more formal, but it has a really lovely softness to it, in that it's a lot more of the less structured flowers, the cosmos, and the little daisies, and oh, there's a hydrangea over there that's blue. Isn't that pretty? Again, oh, it's just stunning. It's just beautiful. And there's my roommate. Speaking of beautiful person. <laughs> All right. And I'm just going to take you a little bit over this way. And again, this is the view of the castle from the garden. I, I I can use all the words, I can take really terrible video, but I'm telling you here, if you ever get a chance to come here, oh gosh, take it, take it. And I'm sorry I did that little uh, interruption of the, the, the uh, falconry exhibit, but I, I couldn't walk away from that. Um, they do falconry uh, displays twice a day here. All right, a little bit more of this section, and then um, I absolutely have to get out of this garden or I will never leave. It's not sure I would leave eventually because they wouldn't allow me to stay. But the thing that's really um, important in terms of our time today is we are going north uh, to the tip of the mainland. Well, almost the tip of the mainland. And we are catching a ferry up to the north, to the north, to the Orkneys. Oh, stunning. Absolutely love that. It's just beautiful. And I know I'm bouncing around here. Uh, I think both. Yeah, let's do one here. Sorry, you're hearing us uh, talk about selfie plants, but I had to get this in too. Okay, and this is the last little bit before we head back to the car. Oh my gosh. I hope you guys can see this. I really hope this video turns out. It's, um, I know it's gonna be long. I know there's gonna be interruptions. I know it's weird to go back and forth with it, but um, it's just stunning. Anyway, this is Dunrobin Castle. The Duke of Sutherland's, the Dukes of Sutherland lives here. Absolutely, absolutely stunning. Thanks for letting us visit.